Hey there gamers, racers, and motorsports fans. Welcome to another video here on A Plus Sim Racing. Well, here we are in R Factor 2 for the first time on this channel. And that's because I just signed up to Low Fuel Motorsports, which has recently expanded their on online ranking system to R Factor 2. So, not only is this my first race with Low Fuel Mo Motorsports, this is also my first online race in R Factor 2, my first race in this Alpine Cup car and also the first time racing at the circuit which is Teratonga in New Zealand. So there was a lot of firsts going on in this race and what a race it was. Lots of action let me tell you. There were lots of cars off track in the dirt spinning around making contact but this is a rookie server so that's to be expected. But even though it was a very chaotic race full of mayhem with a lot of fun uh, unfortunately, the races that followed weren't quite so stellar. Uh, my safety rating has continually been improving, but my rating, as in the ELO, has taken a bit of a hit. But that's alright, this is just the rookie servers, so we can always improve later on. So let's get into it and take a look at what happened in this race here at Teratonga in the Alpine Cup in R Factor 2. All right, here we are on the grid, getting ready. You can see the lights going red in the distance. And you have to listen for the sound in R Factor 2 because there are no uh, overlay HUD lights to use. So you really have to pay attention. And even before getting to turn one, we can already see some dust flying up from cars getting some tires in the grass. And now we go into turn one and a car comes right across in front of me. You can take a look from their view. Nothing I can do about that. Moving on now, just trying to hold it steady and getting through the first lap with as little incidents as possible. We can see more dust getting kicked up, see a car going wide there, so let's just be extra cautious and try and finish this lap. Alright, let's skip forward to the hairpin, the last turn of the lap, you can see closing that gap down too quick, so I decided to take avoiding action, I was going to run into the back of that car, so let's take another look from the outside view, you can see that gap closing down, I take to the grass to give myself more room to slow down and I just managed to turn in, avoiding any contact. But that does put me back, I've dropped a lot of speed, and I'm losing positions. So let's fast forward here, you can see this is P3 up ahead, getting a little bit of tires into the grass on the outside, and once again, losing traction, you can see the P2 car spinning around right here. We've got a two for one in turn one. Switching back on board to my view, Coming down the start finish straight, just approaching turn one. See, I'm going to have to defend here, so I'm taking the inside line. To try and outbreak just a little bit, and this car is aware that I'm there. They're giving me a little bit more space than they needed to, and they ultimately paid the price for that. So let's flash forward a little bit again. We can see this was P3, trying to recover, cuts across the track, spins, and doesn't go very well for him. Once again, back on board my view, you can see just to the left, a little bit of dust and that was that car. We've got more action up ahead so let's take a look. And this was P2 who just got back on track only to get taken out. And back on board my car I'm just trying to get by without causing any incidents without getting collected and all the stuff that's going on around me. So at this point I'm contending with this red car in front which was behind me and before I made my mistake so I know I can outpace them. So it's just a matter of waiting for an opportunity to get by but until I can find that opportunity, I'm just going to try and stay close in case they make a mistake I can capitalize on. Speaking of which, it looks like they've sent it too deep into turn one and they're coming around. We make a little bit of contact, but no damage. And I'm pretty sure that helped them out, pushing them to face the right way once again. I would have preferred to avoid any contact because that can always cause damage, but there was no harm done. Move on. 
flash forward to later on in the race. You can see a car has gone off there. Let's see what happens. They've just carried too much speed into the turn and didn't get enough of a steering angle. Then they met Mr. Barry R. Let's flash forward once again to the end of this lap and see what we can see. And this is where I made my mistake because the 100 meter board has been taken out by someone else as well as the base so there's no marker to go by except for the rubbered in line on the track which with this overcast and not a whole lot of reflections it's hard to differentiate that from the rest of the track and you can see there I'm not the only one who got it wrong but unfortunately I spun around and they must have carried a lot more speed through their mistake into turn one I'm sorry the last turn the hairpin just before the start finish straight so I've lost multiple positions there I'm gonna have to work real hard to make that up into turn one now once again the long left hander this is where a lot of drivers are getting it wrong and as I say that a car goes off to the left and there's a little bit of a collision right in front of me but it looks like they're both in good enough shape to keep going so at this point I have fallen way behind my starting position and I've got a lot of work to do so here I am trying to close the gap find a way to get past both of these cars. So I spend a little bit of time behind them trying to analyze where I'm going to be able to make a pass. Just trying to stay close in case either of them makes a mistake I can easily capitalize on or in case we get to a point where I know I can outbreak them. So let's flash forward once again. So here we are one lap later still right behind these two trying to find a way to get by. I know I'm faster in that turn, I'm trying to position myself for the next turn and make a bit of contact with this car here. I wasn't aware they were there, they were coming up a little bit faster and they managed to get by. So I'm just going to try and stick close behind this car because if they are faster they might be able to be a wedge that will give me a bit of space to get by one or two of these cars. Hopefully here in the heavy braking zone of the last turn. And it looks like this is the opportunity, so I've gone for the gap and I'm back on the throttle. And it looks like I've got the move done, so I can move all the way over to the far right. Setting myself up for a good entry into turn one, and I'm pretty sure that the car behind is not going to make a lunge, so I don't have to worry about that. So now I'm trying to close the gap on the next car. But as you can see, just as I start closing the gap, I can get a little bit off track, get some dirt on the tires, and now I've got to take a diff defensive line to make sure that the car behind doesn't try and slip up the inside. So I'm covering the apex the best I can while I get my tires back up to optimal condition. At this point, we're well into the race, so traction levels are falling off. As you can see, the car in front gets it wrong, cuts back across the track. There's another one off to the left coming back on the track, and I managed to avoid both of them without incident. And we can see just up ahead another car that I'm closing on rapidly, so they must have made a mistake coming out of the hairpin. So hopefully that will be able to uh, afford me another position. I just need to focus on being steady and hopefully opportunity will come my way. And we can see just up ahead another car has gone off to the outside of turn one. Gonna keep an eye on them as they rejoin the track making sure that there's no collision. And it looks like this is the faster car that has gone off, passed and gone off again. You can see they've just got it a little bit wrong in turn one carrying too much speed in. So hopefully I can stay close to them and I won't, have, I won't even have to try and make a move, I'm just going to hope that they send themselves off again. But as luck would have it, things didn't quite go as I had hoped. They didn't make any more catastrophic mistakes that I could take advantage of. But the rest of the race did provide a lot of action with other cars going off track, spinning around, making collisions, and all kinds of calamity. So here we have someone trying to overtake a back marker who misses the brakes, sends it wide and takes out that poor back marker while he loses a position himself. Same car, next lap, getting into the dirt and we can see three cars spinning around. One of them survives and here's the view from the next car behind who unfortunately gets clipped by the car trying to rejoin. So now we have 
a back marker coming out of the pit lane, crossing right over the yellow lines, swerving back and forth a little bit. Really unsure about what they're going to do because they have a blue flag. And there's a car coming up close behind. So they look like they're going on the inside, but then they switch to the outside and there's collision. And unfortunately, that car behind was yours truly. As you can see, I'm taking the outside line. I see them switching to the outside line. I try and take the inside line, but there's just too much movement for what the car can handle. It was already pretty close to the limit of grip. So I had to take to the grass and carefully rejoin. I lost a couple more positions. Flash forward again. And we can see another driver has got it wrong on the outside of turn one. It's a very common theme in this race. So let's just follow along and see what happens. Oh, the car who just rejoined got more dirt in their tires as the right side dips into the grass. I'm flashing my lights to try and let them know, because they are a back marker, that me and this other car want by, and they've gone wide. Back into the grass they go, and we're able to resume racing. And now we are coming up to the final couple laps of this race. Really, really trying to gain more positions. As I fell behind, I started in, I think, P15. Fell all the way back, close to P20. And I'm just trying to fight like hell to get back up to at least my starting position before the end of the race. This is my first one with LFM, and I really wanted some good results. So I'm just trying to stay as close to this red car in front as I can, keeping some pressure on. I might be able to find an opportunity to outbreak them, overtake them, or I can keep the pressure on and hopefully they'll make a mistake. I know I have more pace than them because I did outqualify them. You can see here I'm trying to position myself for the next turn and they come across so I yield, but they outbreak themselves and I get a free position. up to the final turn and that was the final lap we saw some dust on the way in we can see there's a back marker spinning around there unfortunately that didn't give me another position but here we are at the end of the race and surprise surprise I managed to finish P13 even though I had all those mistakes and incidents and fell all the way back some of it was my fault some of it wasn't and that's just the way it goes so that was a very exciting and action-packed first race here in Low Fuel Motorsports in R Factor 2. But that's not all. In one of the following races, I had the pleasure of receiving a direct message from another driver on the Low Fuel Motorsports webpage where they blamed me for ruining their career. So let's take a look at that incident from the chase cam of my car as well as their car. Oh, you can see one of the back markers desperately trying to finish the race before they run out of time. They're obviously a lap down. They completely missed the brakes and went right across the track. And here I come on the last turn of the cool down lap. I'm going to bring it back into the pits. And then we'll take a look at that incident from a couple races later where I was accused of ruining somebody's career. Alright, so this is the chase cam following me. You can see I'm trying to get a, a line on the car in front, and that car goes clearly off track. I was giving them car's width, and they came back on and ran into me. So let's look at their perspective. They've got two tires in the dirt, two tires on the dirt and the curb, and they were cutting right across the track. So here's a look in slow-mo, and I blocked out their name because I'm not trying to shame anyone. This is just an example of what you don't do. They were off track. They came back on. I gave them as much room as I could because there was a car next to me, but they had more than a car's width. So the fact that they were not parallel with the track when they re-entered and they were going across the track, knowing that there was two cars behind them, sorry, that's not my fault. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Especially in sim racing, you don't have the same view that you do in a real car. We can have peripheral vision, 
glance to see your mirrors and all that kind of stuff. We're limited to a single screen which has a very small field of view relative to a real car. Unless you have VR and triple screens, you, you know, like there's no radar application in uh, R-Factor 2. Um, so you kind of have to use your crew chief and keep, a, keep an eye on your mirrors and use your look left and right buttons and to be really aware of where the cars are and if you get two tires in the dirt you know that you're not going to have the grip and when you try and get back on track you really have to be careful that you're going parallel and not across the track because you're going to get in someone else's way and because they didn't leave the track it's not on them it's on you anyway I hope you enjoyed that I certainly did I'm looking forward to more low fuel motorsport here in R Factor 2. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time.